Okay. So first things first, <clears throat> I wanted to uh, do an do a uh, unboxing video um, that kind of was an answer to a lot of uh, um, the unboxing videos that I'd seen previously, which were relatively without any kind of uh, creativity, though I don't know how creative I, I will be, um, but also, um, you know, tended to, to focus on some of the negatives of the Ouya, <clears throat> which I probably will not do. I heard about Ouya uh, probably in uh, March or April of this year, 2013, and, and uh, had followed it, you know, briefly or very, very um, non-thoroughly um, on the internet and seen that I was actually uh, well beyond the uh, Kickstarter date. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Kickstarter, this is probably still the most successful Kickstarter uh, electronics uh, uh, campaign that ever occurred. And I think the, the original target was around... Hmm, I'll have to check my numbers, but I think the original target was around 600,000 and they ended up getting over 8 million <coughs> in contributions. Uh, you can see that I'm, I'm uh, a fairly avid gamer. Uh, we have a Wii U here for my son. Um, uh, I'm an Xbox 360 guy. We do actually have a Wii downstairs as well and a number of Xbox 360s um, uh, in the house. Uh, I think the total actually is four, which are used essentially as DVD players, game machines, and, uh, and um, uh, media streaming. <clears throat> as far as DVD goes, we're really not uh, that impressed by, by uh, Blu-ray. We've only recently gotten a TV that, uh, in our house that really would probably be affected by it. It's a, it's a 1080p, a 60-inch uh, 60 1080p TV. And uh, probably some, some point later on we'll, we'll work on a, an actual projector system in a, in a, in a media center in our, in our house, in a media room. And this is kind of the, the first stages of planning for that, which is um, the, the planned obsoles obsolescence for the 360 will eventually shift, I hope, to the OUYA with the uh, XBMC and uh, uh, we'll be able to stream all of our movies um, and possibly even uh, DVD media uh, directly to the OUYA um, from, uh, from a server that I have, a, a home server that I have um, uh, uh, through XBMC. But uh, that's a little ways down the road. So let's, uh, let's move forward. This is the unboxing. I got this OUYA from, um, uh, from Best Buy this morning. This is the second day that the OUYA has been available um, for, for retail purchase. So the first day was, I guess, the 25th. Today is the 26th <coughs> of June 2013. And uh, uh, I had actually pre-ordered it through Amazon. Uh, but when I saw that my order was not going through on the first day, um, I realized that I wouldn't actually get my OUYA, you know, even with two-day mail or two-day delivery uh, before we left for vacation uh, this Saturday. So, um, you know, there wasn't very much room for any kind of mistakes or if I missed the delivery or anything like that. So I decided to just cancel my order with Amazon, went to Best Buy, uh, spent about 65 cents more for the OUYA, so it's $99.99 at Best Buy on the 26th. And uh, it was like 99.13 or something like that um, uh, on, on Amazon uh, for those who had pre-ordered. <clears throat> so here we go. The box is nice. Uh, it came in a very nice box. Uh, Best Buy really didn't have their uh, displays up in order, uh, which was kind of uh, distressing in a lot of ways um, because uh, it seemed to me that, that uh, there was a lot of um, you know retail hype. Uh, that went along with the OUYA, you know, uh, there's all sorts of uh, blabber on the internet about it, and honestly, um, I would have expected, especially a place like Best Buy, um, to really have the, um, the OUYA uh, uh, display set up properly, and it was really not, it, <clears throat> it still had uh, uh, PS3 and Xbox 360 games on the shelves, with just, you know, kind of the OUYA banner 
set up and so on. So the Riaz had not even been taken out of the back. This is a uh, this is a this is a uh, the second closest Best Buy to to where I live. All right, <clears throat> here we are. Very nice. The um, the Kickstarter folks they got a really nice uh, packaging. Oh, there we go. Which basically said thank you, um, you know, for for uh, for supporting us, and certainly that was a lot of uh, the reason why I bought the Ouya was to support this type of project. Um, it's it's definitely uh, worth the tinkering aspect, the the hacking aspect, the maker aspect. But also, um, you know, the uh, uh, just the fact that it's an open open source uh, gaming console is, is really what gets me. Um, I probably will go over this in my review somewhat, um, but uh, I am very disappointed with the with the new Xbox, the Xbox One. Um, I've never really been a, a, a PlayStation person. I don't really know the games. Um, I've probably played like maybe. Uh, you know, Tiger Woods Golf or something on, on, on a PS3 or a PS2 probably, um, but never uh, never played anything with any, you know, uh, real traction, uh, like uh, whatever the one is with Hellgast. Um, I never played that. So so this is, this is something that, um, you know, I haven't had a lot of background in, in terms of uh, the DRM, except I've become comfortable with DRM on the 360. Um, as far as it went, which was very similar, I guess, to the DRM that you see on PC games, which is also something I really enjoy. Um, but uh, you know, the, the Xbox One made it, uh, you know, overwhelming. The DRM overwhelming. Um, it, it really felt like uh, Xbox had kind of sold out their fan base. They spent four or five years, um, you know, kind of making making Xboxes the the number one console. You know, in terms of sales uh, on the market, uh, they didn't make. You know, they put all this this money in investing in the in the um, you know quote, quote unquote ecosystem, um, and not even taking a profit for for many years. And now it just looks like they want to stick it to that to that user base. So uh, I'm I'm ha having no more of it. I won't uh, buy an Xbox ever again. Probably not a uh, PlayStation, but uh, the the Ouya really excites me, and you can see that it's pretty well put together. I mean, the packaging is 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 elegant and and nice. The Ouya itself feels very solid uh, in my hand. I wasn't really expecting it to be quite this heavy, um, and the packaging is minimalistic. I mean, I, I think I I've had far more packaging from from Dell computers. I was in IT at one point. From Dell computers, um, you know, on the enterprise side, where they would just have so much packaging, it just didn't make any sense. Um, and these, this is really very compact, and uh, nothing, you know, too overwhelming in terms of packaging. Most likely a, a quick start guide. Um, if you're like me, you probably never read those, or perhaps you refer back to them at some point um, when you feel like you. You made a mistake and you need to go back and fix something that you did wrong. Right. So we have a we have a <clears throat> fairly standard uh, wall uh, wall power connector. This is for the uh, for the UIA. You know, I, I assume that it's not going to need a lot of power uh, to get running. Um, you can really see. I mean, it's it's really. A lot of people have spoken uh, previously. The, the the Kickstarter folks have said uh, quite a bit about this. So those reviews, those other reviews or unboxings, have uh, made a big deal of um, uh, the design aesthetic. And really, this this is uh, a really well designed uh, exterior for what is essentially a, a, an Android phone, a high powered Android phone, or probably what would have been a very high powered Android phone you know, uh, six or seven months ago. Um, now, of course, uh, the, um, the specs, you know, they, they, they jump up enormously uh, every few months. Every time uh, uh, a new Samsung or HTC or 
I guess now we can consider Motorola um, uh, phone comes out, uh, the specs really jump up. But I'd say um, having a, uh, a quad-core Snapdragon system on a chip with uh, a gigabyte of, of uh, usable memory and, and uh, eight gigabytes of storage, uh, gigabyte of RAM, I should say, um, and eight gigabytes of storage is actually pretty uh, standard. I mean, uh, even even some of the past months flagship phones don't really go much further than that. Um, uh, about 16 gigabytes of storage for the HTC One X, a phone that I have. Um, some of the other phones in in that uh, class certainly have around that, maybe twice as much as that, so 32 gigabytes. But you can obviously in the back here you'll see a, a, a Ethernet uh, connector, power connector, uh, HDMI, and a USB. Not clear whether this is a USB 3.0 or 2.0. I'd assume 2.0, 3.0 hasn't really, you know, made the the, the uh, low end of the market yet, and uh, obviously cost and uh, production cost was definitely a concern here. So I'm sure that getting a uh, getting a main board for this with uh, 2.0 USB 2.0 was fine, and for the kind of throughput that that uh, a gaming system needs, that's USB 2.0 should be fine for most cases. The um, controller is. Uh, feels very sturdy, and uh, it appears that some of the concerns that uh, the Kickstarter units may have raised in terms of like the, the buttons perhaps going flush with the uh, faceplate here, which is magnetic, I believe. If I if I don't break this, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes here. It'd be quite funny if I broke this the first the first day or right after I opened it. That was uh, not tough at all. Um, I was under the impression this was a, a, a magnetic lock. It does feel like there's a bit of a magnet magnet there. Yeah, there's definitely guide, guiding magnets there, but it also has a little bit of a friction lock as well, so which is really nice. And the, yeah, the the the, um, the controller is really quite solid. Um, uh, it's well made. There's there there are really no uh, I, what I would what I would consider sort of low cost uh, issues with the controller just from the very first look. You know, the, the injection molded plastic does not have a lot of strings hanging off from it or, or anything like that. It's definitely QA was was taken care of in terms of the controller. We'll just put some batteries in there. They didn't skimp on the batteries either. So a couple of Duracells here, not uh, no-name things that you often find in, in your uh, in your normal, uh, you know, TV remotes. But who knows how long they've been around? So, forgive me for a moment. I'm just going to see how I get the battery in here. Positive here. Pretty simple. And you have that that tab there to lift the battery out to assist you lifting the battery out when you get there. Put it on. Doesn't feel like it's going to shake off or anything like that. Definitely took a little bit of force to put on. You know, you have to kind of experiment, I think, a little bit to see maybe where the best uh, place is to lift that up. And I am probably not going to be able to indulge in my obsessive compulsive plastic ripping. Looks like uh, you know, they definitely wanted to keep this looking shiny and new. Uh, my experience with controllers is that they, they're rarely looked at and often used, so I don't really spend a lot of time worrying about scratches or food or whatever other normal uh, wear and tear you're going to see on a controller. This is actually pretty fascinating. This, this stuff is almost like cellophane tape. It's definitely bonded well on there. Go pretty, pretty simple there, and if you really want to see all this, but maybe I'll cut this out since I'm not really giving very much information <laughs> with the uh, with the unwrapping here. So let's try this side. 
Yep. So it seems to me like the best grip you're going to have in opening this is just to lift slightly on, on the top of the controller or what, what you might call the front of the controller and then just lift it, lift it up around it comes out pretty easily after that. Okay. Just to confirm, positive. Let's seat it. Put it out again. Gently snap it back on and we're good. So that's pretty simple. And I'm actually really, really pleased. It's at the, again, um, it's a pretty, pretty little box, and uh, probably the most enjoyable thing about it is uh, that it's a pretty little box. I mean, that there's definitely um, a really nice design going on here, and I look forward to using it and experimenting with it and getting a few things installed on it, but I would say, you know, for $99, um, you're getting a good presentation. You're getting a solid controller. It feels good in the hand. The uh, there's a good range of motion with the um, uh, with the uh, joysticks, with the analog sticks, with the digital pad, with the D-pad. It seems fine as well. I don't really feel like uh, it's terribly spongy. It does not have. It's obviously not an Xbox 360 controller. There've been a lot of comparisons. With those two controllers, you know, uh, the design is obviously the same. I, you know, Microsoft spent a lot of money and a lot of time designing their controllers for the Xbox 360. Um, uh, they make sense. It's kind of the least common denominator as far as that goes. So I really feel like uh, uh, instead of spending a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of our, uh, our, a lot of your Kickstarter money. Um, that uh, we uh, made a good choice and, and went with a, a design or a base design that uh, that works and, and is well known. Um, I like the offset uh, 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 analog joysticks simply because, again, I'm an Xbox 360 player. I play this uh, this type of controller all the time, so that's definitely going to feel much more comfortable to me. Um, the the uh, shoulder buttons or bat buttons and the triggers are okay. Um, you do feel a little spongy, um, but uh, as someone noted before, uh, I can't really remember where I read the review. It might have actually been on Android Police. Um, you know, trigger buttons are famously difficult to get the right feel for, so um, I'm not really too worried about that. For, for $100, for $99.99, or whatever Amazon discount price you get it for in the months coming, um, this is a great little package. And <clears throat> Considering the the um, library of, of games that we have now, which is about 170 the last time I checked, um, which was probably within the last 24 hours, uh, you know that's a that's a good game library. There are enough good games or well-known games to keep you busy for a while. I'm always kind of fascinated, I think, and I'll go into this more on my review. Um, how many people get upset about these the lack of sheer number of games for the Ouya? Um, what really counts is how many games are you going to play? How much time do you have to play your games? For me, I'm married. I have three kid, four kids. Um, you know, it's extremely uh, difficult for me to find time where I can spend hours to play. Now, I recognize that's not the average gamer, um, but still, you know, I've been playing games since I was about 